very good wins under his belts. Like All right. I always enjoy watching Aegis fight. Yeah, so it looks like, I think we're going to get a classic, like, Swordy versus, like, well, depending if it's Pac-Man or Steve, they're going to be, like, a different types of zoners. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. But both very good brawling tools. <laughs> I, I'm okay with Steve if we get a Steve because too many Pac-Mans. <laughs> yeah, but this is going to be inter interesting because I know Tickle has played against a lot of JDB in the past. Oh, okay. So he's going into this with some knowledge as well. Yes, yeah, some uh, solid Pac-Man knowledge. And Pao, very good player, but I'm not exactly sure how, how many Idaho Aegises there are, or is it general experience, but... Couldn't I'm say, at, honestly. I imagine you'll be, be able to pick things up pretty fast. And we're going straight to game one on PS2, Zonerland, but Mithra able to cover a lot of space. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think one of the big things we have to pay attention in this matchup is how this Hydrant play is going to come out, because a lot of Pac-Man's moves, unless it's a smash attack, don't break Hydrant immediately. So if Tickle decides to hit the Hydrant first, then Pac-Man can counter hit very yep. differently. Mithra specializing in putting him at the ledge is what Tickle loves because he goes going to this Pyra very early for sense and just potentially taking slots early or catching rolls with down air. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Looks like both these players are taking the time to pull each other out. Pretty safe, non committal options. I am, uh, I am definitely enjoying seeing the Pac Man. The most recent two Pac-Man actually using bonus groups quite a bit more. For sure. Like it when you seems get, to help. When you get tools like Bell in your hand, like yep. you have to be very, very careful what you select as the options. Yeah, right now I think Pow has key in hand. Key. Yep. Yeah, and he's gonna cleave the stage and knock to go off. But now we're back with the Bell in hand. There we go. Yeah. A re-catch and gets key. Yeah, Tickle's got to find his way off these platforms right now, but that should Ooh. take the stock. PS2, smaller ceilings. So yep. that down tail up there with that rage is going to take that stock. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Oh, Big thing there you go. Yeah. Just like you said. Yeah. When you watch Pac-Man, you have to take note about how they prime that hydrant. Sometimes they'll do the hydrant at a height where yep. they're able to nail just before they land. Then the back here and up tilt are able to send that hydrant immediately. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Z-Drop Apple just covering so much space with that Hydrant. So that get-up attack was just able to get meatied. Okay. Yeah, so as that you was smart. He didn't run into it this time. Yeah, so as you can tell, like previously, like Tickle very much favors the Pyra. But now he's trying to try to get a neutral win with the Mithra before he puts it back in the ledge. I can't say that's a bad move, honestly. Pyra, uh, Pyra doesn't exactly have the frame data, but... Mm -hmm. Mithra? Very uh, no, Pyra doesn't have the frame data that Mithra has, and because of that, you know, getting those neutral wins with Mithra, you could probably rack up quite a decent combo on them, mm -hmm. get some decent percent in before you switch over to Pyra. Yeah, well, this Hydrant has started to become an interesting dynamic because Pyra's been playing this Hydrant at the center stage, and Tickle has kind of just been trying to play around it, and oh that's oh my god, yeah. They need enough there from Pac-Man players is when I hit that bell, there's a blue line that pops up. Because Tickle was pulling the same direction, how do exactly where he's gonna go and is able to throw an F smash there. I did actually not know that. <laughs> I didn't know about the the line that comes yeah. up. Yeah. If later on during the sets we might start seeing uh him Tickle start DIing the bell differently and we see that blue line shifting. Okay. Yeah. And as you can see he starts looking for the stare around these percents, because if he can find like a roll in there, uh, he can take stocks very, very early and equalize this. A Pac-Man is scrapping with the sortie. He does yeah, not he care about holding these disjoints. I am going to be in your face. I'm throwing fruits. I'm dropping my hydrants. Well, and so far it's working out pretty well for him. He still has a stock lead. Yeah, maintained his lead, but playing quite offensively. Yeah. Probably the most aggressive Pac-Man we've seen so far. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm surprised that wasn't enough to take the stock. No, he's at the ledge. What? Okay, the, good five. Uh, yeah, that was unfortunate. Yeah, lots of end lag on that on that move after hitting Hydrant. And Pau's going to be taking game one on PS2. A pretty commanding lead, too, on that one. Mm -hmm. It's looking pretty even for the most part. But it, then yeah. at, at some point, I feel like Pau was just able to like understand the tempo. And he was able to just seize control and win most of the neutrals. Agreed. And he carried that percent. And it's so hard sometimes with Pac-Man because if they don't give you a direct opening, you have to like get through like three different layers of defense. Like, you know, <laughs> you have to play that forty chess, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when I think about Hydrant, sometimes it's like a portable two block that they drop down, like Steve in a way, oh, and the water shoots point. out. 
So like there's a dynamic of it like blocking a view. Because if you try to like swing a smash attack and break it right away, like they can counter hit you. Yeah. Something to note with Pac-Mans is they like to do a lot of rising pairs in neutral. Although not directly truly safe, they do that falling nair. So right. people have to either try to like carry that nair or anti-air in between like the fair before the nair if you have like a faster option. So maybe we'll start seeing Tickle uh, process that situation more as the shield pressure starts hitting him. Okay, Galaga. Yeah. How's racking up the percent again? Still relatively even. But Tickle is just refusing to switch to Mithra. He's staying on that Pyra because he knows that he's going to get that money maker when he does get his first control <laughs> winning. Yeah. Back throw, set him off stage. Fair was a little bit off the hitting. Yeah, he's trying to do that down there on that platform because Pow jumps into that. He's going to take down out smash and die at 66%. <laughs> Okay, the bell waddle. This yep. is the classic that we've seen all the time in the PNW. You gotta hold your shield, you gotta stay on the flats, so you have to be really, really careful, because if this bell hits you, it's going to take your stock. Yeah, but good blazing edge right there to go through the hydrant and hit Pac-Man. Pac-Man losing the fruits has to recharge the bell. Oh, it's prime there bell. There it is. That's smash gonna be taking that first stock. Again, how with the lead. Yeah, I feel like he's uh, feeling pretty comfortable right now in this matchup. He's doing like very, very like safe, like moderate reward options, and it's just getting so much mileage because he just keeps winning neutral. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Trying to use the water pushback to get an opening. Instead, he's going to eat a back air punish, and now you're getting sent back off stage for a tickle to potentially get this ledge trap. But fighting back with that dare. Ooh, that's going to take the stop. Pyra Bear, extremely strong, especially when it's that fresh. Yeah, we have another key right now. 16%, and he's gonna anti-air. Now we're gonna probably gonna see a bell, and then now we're gonna be in this kind of, this hostage situation where you have to deal with this bell coming at you, but, oh, Tickle's gonna take it back, so he's gonna oh. get some damage. Oh, but he whiffs the punish, he's a little he bit off. it against him. Yeah. The awkward part about Mithra in this matchup is, although in most Mithra matchups, she is very, very good at winning the neutral and sending people off stage, is that she does not do enough damage to that Hydrant. That's a very good point. So having Pyra to able to, like, smack it is very good, but you have to be very careful at which option you pick, because they can be quite laggy at times. Yeah. I was gonna say, he hit the Hydrant twice with Mithra and wasn't enough to do anything with it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Grab goes for the forward throw. Yeah. I think something we have to note is that Pow is looking for a lot of his, like, advantage to, like, state openings to get into the ledge traps off of jumps at this time. He's gonna jump, like, doing bears over the shields and pairs. Um, trying to, like, get those, op like, the bigger openings that can potentially get kills. And then he doesn't get, like, something free, like, a uh, true bear punish. Okay, Nair clanking with the apple stops him from potentially dying. And a little high on the dare, we have this ledge trap. Ooh, okay, frame traps with the grab, send him back, the water almost shoving him into that to make it a true combo. Yeah, that would have been unfortunate. Oh. That there. Oh. oh my gosh, almost died. From Very that. good DI. DI straight for the corner to, lift, to keep his stock alive. And that Hydrant, okay, not quite enough to kill yet, but now you have to keep be aware that. Pyra's, most of her strong stray hits can potentially just kill Pac-Man, but you have to be very, very careful about this Hydrant and these fruits coming straight at you. Oh, there we go. Hydrant off stage, gonna take that second stop. That's kind of a tough position for Pyra, because usually when people see that Hydrant coming after you, you have to like try to clank it in the air, but like in certain spots, you can't just stop you right away as Pyra, or it's just gonna die, because you're yeah. too far away, too close. That oh, there we go. Gentleman's gonna take take it there off that new get up. Now we're back in this last stock situation again. I love how they call it the gentleman, but that was rude as hell. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing. Already 64% off of a single neutral win. That is fantastic. Yeah. The thing with Pac-Man is like he doesn't get a whole bunch like immediately off of, off his hits, but like the damage racks up pretty fast. And oh, then yeah. after a couple chips, all of a sudden you have to suddenly have to worry about Bell. Yep. Lots of like, Pow is choosing to like play where he is like hovering the center, but he'll back off to the ledge to hold fruit. But Tickle has to respect that because that fruit, if he like is too haphazard on a jump in or like just running straight in, he could potentially get bailed and die. And that's like the kind of respect you have to get Pac Man. That's what makes Pac Man so strong as a character in the dying space. 
Oh, that's a shield pressure. Okay, we have the bell waddle. Okay, just out of range. Because it was the second toss, how is isn't able to re-pick up the bell, but he can prime another one. Okay, good grab. Oh, he does a jab release. The Nair lingers enough that's to an hit interesting that. interesting choice. Yeah, but now you have to be very careful with your pal, because if you get down air, you can get up smashed, and that yeah. will take your stock. You also have to, oh, he chooses to trade the bell for a key and sends him off stage. I have to imagine we're going to see like a hydrant setup, maybe? Oh, we're looking for the dare. Oh, that's no. not taking it. I was going to say, I didn't <laughs> think prominence revolt would be enough, but that's mm. crazy. There we go. Oh, the last hit that Blazing Edge is going to make it so Pal can't take back the center stage off that. That's a whiff oh. punish, and it's not enough. Oh my god. Gonna be off the stage, Clakes the apple with the oh fair. Oh no, F -tilt. F tilt will do it though. Oh man. Yeah, Tickle clutching that game out in the end there. Very scary situation. That was that was very well played, I will say that. It almost felt like for like a whole minute, he was just trapped and kind of like dealing with like the waves of like hydrogen <laughs> Kind of like Bloons Tower defense or something. Oh, absolutely. Oh, switched over to Richter. Okay, this oh, is going to be interesting. Oh, I think I... Oh, Wait. No. <laughs> I heard it. Did no. you not hear it? I wasn't quite sure. I I, we're still on Pac-Man. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, again, we're going to see the Rising Fair and the Nair. This time, Tickle, instead of like trying to drop shield perfectly, he just like backs off. And that's understandable. If you don't necessarily how, know how to like directly punish something that you're seeing as it's, as, as, as it's developing, um, it's better, more so to just avoid it in the first place and take less damage than trying to experiment if you don't have a clear, clear cut guess. Yeah, it's gonna wreck a damage. The thing with like side beats, you don't get any direct combos, but you get to read the guess afterwards. Yeah. So if, you, if they're finding that they're jumping a lot, you can just get up air. This Ooh, reset. The footstool. Okay, good option, good delay. Because nice if, he, catch. if you just get up, you get down and out smashed. Okay, let's trap situation. There it comes down. That bear is Hydra's coming to you. Good air dodge. That was perfect timing. Yeah, I like these blazing edges that, that tickles go out. <laughs> oh, he gets caught out there. But like he's doing the blazing edge to like give him more time potentially to like deal with the bell that's sitting at the ledge. Instead of trying to pick jump or get up get up immediately. But that yeah. time he gets his jump called out. Oh my god, nice tech. Yeah. Good good idea holding towards the stage so he's able to tech it. Yeah. He's been jumping off the ledge a couple times, so Tickle's gonna call it out. Gets the key cash out though, it's 19%. Taking back center stage, finally. Okay, we got some early fruit percent combos, now we have orange, but we're gonna switch it out for that Galaga. That Galaga hits you, you might take 50. Oh, that should be the stop. Oh, there, yep. yeah. Power down, up, is, power down is so strong because you have so many follow-ups after it. You have up smash at the earliest, then you have uppies in the middle, and then up air will always be there for you, unless it's there like past like 160. Yep. Okay, good early. Tilt up air. Okay, good combos. Uh, when Pac-Man has the Hydrant on the ground, this is a very vulnerable position for him because he can't use it as a stall and fall option with a hitbox. So he can get a lot of mileage off juggling him right now. Yeah, you have to be so careful about these dares on the platform. If you're jumping haphazardly trying to anti-air pie on the platform, you'd lose your stock. Yep. Yeah, that blazing end's gonna do a lot of damage. Oh, footstool. another oh. footstool. His, his footstools after blazing end is yeah. are crazy. Yeah, that footstool is so good too because it put him straight into that hydrant, and this should be up air and taking the stop. Yeah, yep. down air. Up there. You have to be so careful about jumping, as he's been saying. Oh man, the amount of uh, adaptation so far from Tickle is yeah. actually crazy. Okay, Bell's gonna whiff there. Tickle is doing a lot more of these blazing ends right now, trying to like stop Pal from doing his default game plan of getting the fruits, which I think is very good for like keeping, making sure that the tempo doesn't become too mundane for him and getting outpaced. Ooh, that was That's okay. a great dodge. Yeah, very good option coverage by Pal there though, making him getting that grab off of that. It's primed, okay. Good shield discipline to avoid getting hit by that hydrant. He's not getting hit by that key anywhere. Yeah, I don't expect him to be honestly. <laughs> yeah, Tickle is still on this pyro. He's living for it right now. Getting that good grab, it's gonna be down to a fair, but a little too high percent because of that rage. And you were not wrong. He does seem to prefer pyro, mm -hmm. and I can see why. He gets a lot of big space with that sword, and a lot of good ways to kill people. And Tickle primarily played Corrin a lot in Smash 4. Oh, okay. So he's very much used to like this style of like slightly slower but like very strong like 
destroy character with big destroys. Yeah, that Saibi's gonna stop the apple in his place, and he's able to air out back to the stage, even without his sword. Down tilt up air is not gonna take the stock. Yeah, but Tao's trying to like find spacing to like land right now. He's just like double jumping over his center and trying to find different ways to mix it back in. Because he's afraid of like getting there right now. And that hydrant. Pac-Man oh. has a lot of lingering hitboxes. <laughs> and sometimes when you're drifting back, you might just get tapped. Yeah, but Pao is getting some reads on these defensive options. He is like brawling straight up. And now he's like suddenly even the percent. Down such is gonna be a little bit off. High it's primed, it's coming at you, but too short, too short to get hit by that. Yeah, blazing end again is gonna send you through the air. What's the mix up? Yeah. Tickle loves covering that low distance there. As you saw, like then he wasn't doing down it this time, he was doing a lot of down tilts, trying to like catch people panicking out of the corner. Right. Oh, he tries to do the, do the up smash to catch a jump potentially, but it's a little bit off. Yeah, but now we're at the percents. Oh. No. Oh, goodness. That's a frame trap, oh, though. Yep. yep. And Audra Way trying to launch the up air. Run, off the, run off the platform to die. Very <laughs> good coverage. Tickle's going to take that game, too. Yeah, he's definitely adapted very well to, uh, or since game one, at least. Yeah. It's interesting watching Tickle, because a lot of his habit conditioning is very akin to watching like, super heavies in a way. Oh. Because you watch him like start like paying very close attention to how people air dodge, or like how people try to play out the corner. And then as Pyra, he'll cash out and get those down airs, those down tilts, the frame traps. And that's how he gets a lot of mileage and takes these stocks when he seemingly is behind. Yeah, Blazing End's gonna go through, but he's gonna get hit by that Galaga coming through. That Rising Fair. Yeah, Tickle just seems to very much favor throwing the side through the hydrant because he's trying to catch Pow dashing back after the hydrant to go yeah. the fruit. And if he's able to throw it up fast enough, he can counter it. But if Pow calls that out, he's able to like get close enough to punish uh, Pyramidra while her sword is thrown out. Oh, oh, went right past the trampoline. Oh no. It was a little bit close. I think if Pow was able to DI out a little bit more, maybe he could have hit the trampoline, but he might have been there. I wasn't able to call correctly. Yeah, but Tickle now with, the, with one of, I think it might be his first lead in the set. I think you're probably right about that, actually. 22% from that up B. Pyra hits like a truck. And then up air in this jungle situation. Gonna retreat to the corner. Nice. Yeah. That's coming out, but Tickle is doing something very smart. He's hiding directly under the platform because it creates a little roof. So the bell can never go through the platform and hit him. Yep. It's only through the sides, which is like directly in front of him. But Tickle is not in threat of bell when he's standing in that spot. Yeah, right there, that yeah, discipline. That's really smart. He's so comfortable sitting like just outside of the range. And it's like doing all that mileage there. I think going up. With a bell in hand, this should be an up smash. That will take the spot. That will take it. Okay, that that hydrant's gonna die on the next hit, but that up throw is gonna lead to like a small bit early combo. Up throw up there. Galaga coming out, that's gonna be a fair, two fairs. Bear, up yeah. air. I don't think he has a jump right now. I mean, he has a force to land, but he does the no big sub land option. Ooh, that down almost hitting. Bell, that should be yeah, a smash. Yeah, that should be a stock. Yeah. Pow is up again in this game. Is this going to be our first game five? That would be pretty exciting. I Perry. would be excited about that. I'm just happy it hasn't been a 3 0 yet. <laughs> hey, down air, up air, not enough to kill. Oh, side B going straight in. <laughs> I dashed the. Oh, you're gonna take a lot of percent from getting hit by that key and the hydrant on that unwary dash attack. Yeah, no jump on Pac Man right now. Oh, there we yeah. go. Tickle recognizing that Pac Man uses jump up there, chases out with the fair. Yeah. Gotta be careful about this Galaga for this early percent, but Tickle is getting sharked on this platform. Hey, okay, Nair is able to clank the hydrant and hit Pac Man. Bell dynamic, Tickle guards the bell, stops Pow from running towards it. Very important so that you try to limit as many times as Pac-Man can to get the bell, because it's almost an inevitability that he'll get the bell, especially when he throws you off stage. But like the less interactions you have to play when you're playing rock, paper, scissors with the man with an electric property move, the better. <laughs> yeah.
purple. He misses the trap. No. I saw that up B and Pac-Man was going too far forward at first. That's like, unfortunate. Oh. I think he probably thought he was a little closer maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's no, a spooky situation because obviously like a lot of people can think he can go straight for the side B back to the ledge, but side B can get two frame by the, by the, by the down air. So yeah. I think he just favored trying to use the up B and potentially if he does get spiked, he can land back on the trampoline. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll be, I'll be swapping back out for mana. It was good.